Hey there, laser junkies! Today we're diving into the world of engraving mastery with the Atizer L2, a powerhouse of precision and creativity. This bad boy packs a punch with its impressive specs, unique features, and a price tag that won't make you broke at a price of around $600. So let's strap in and explore if this machine is a game changer when it comes to the world of laser engraving or if it's just an overly flashy machine. This big boy is a marvel when it comes to engraving, boasting insane specs that set it apart from the market. For full machine details and best prices, check the links in the description below. So far with the L2, I've managed to engrave projects like this, and this, and even this, and that is because of specs like a laser spot accuracy the size of 0.6 by 0.8 millimeters, which ensures your designs come to life with unparalleled details. Not just in engravings, but in cutting too. The 24 laser model is quite a catch at this price range and provides the necessary power for high speed engraving on different materials. What's even more impressive are the Z axis features that allow for perfect height adjustments on your projects and the insane speed the machine can move at. Let's see what you can expect out of the box and I'll show you the different tests and projects I made on this machine. The unboxing process is one of the most satisfying I have had on a laser engraver yet. Everything is packed like a lunchbox, so neat, so yummy. Such a compact box already got me in a good mood and then after taking everything out I noticed that these steel frames are insanely sturdy. Even a tank won't be able to bend this machine. I saw a laser model and instantly the knob at the top caught my attention. First engraver I've seen with smooth z-axis adjustments I thought. And then I realized the z-axis doesn't just adjust manually but also automatically. That's insane. Anyways you also get a cool looking air pump, some tools, a USB TF card to store data and print directly into the machine. Of course a power supply. Wi-Fi connection, and a cable that connects your machine to your laptop or PC. Sadly, Wi-Fi connection works for the phone app, not for laser GBL or Lightburn. But I noticed that the other mechanics are wisely thought out. When you finish assembling the machine, there's a minimal amount of wire shown. If you do cable management for your working desk, you will appreciate this machine. Atizer is definitely paying attention to the details. There are some assembly instructions which are helpful, but the overall assembly process takes some time and concentration. Once you've got the Atizer into one piece, the fun starts. The machine reaches 900 mm per second, which is double to triple the amount of all other machines at this level. What does the speed look like? To test it, I made the machine run around in circles at maximum acceleration to reach maximum speeds, and it was very fast. Of course, I also checked horizontal and vertical max speeds. Sadly, because the machine has to stop and accelerate, it rarely reaches the top speeds claimed, but it is still the fastest machine. To confirm this, I'm putting this machine against five other top-notch laser engravers in my next video in different tests. It's gonna be fun, you should check it out. Okay, so machine speed is good, but there's still a few tests to be done here, like accuracy. The easiest way to test the accuracy of a machine is by making it engrave perfect circles. Normally, the smaller the circles get, the less accurate they become. Here we have different circles engraved at 900, 300 and 2.5 mm speed. At faster speeds, you see some deformations of the circles and at 2.5 mm the circles are perfect. Next, we need to see the laser power and overall machine performance, and the best way to do this is by doing some engravings. First, let's engrave a quick chart on each material and see where the optimal settings are. Starting with MDF, even at max speeds, the machine is producing good results. But for the optimal settings, that we get at 100 mm per second, 80% power. With plywood, best settings are at 300 mm, 100% power. With stone, it's 300 mm per second, 90% power. Stainless steel depends on what color you want, but for black you need 10 mm per second, 90% power. With aluminum, the best results were 300 mm per second, 50% power. 
but you most likely can push the speed up to around 500 mm, 100% power. With tiles it depends on the paint, but here was the test. After getting the optimal numbers, I started doing different projects on all of the materials. So on MDF, I went for an angry dinosaur printed as a Stuki setting on the top and grayscale setting on the bottom. Stuki was a little bit more defined and had better light colors. Let's try real 3D images. Can the machine handle it? I tested the engraver on this 3D owl image and tried to engrave it on MDF and proper wood. After many passes at different heights using the Z height adjustment knob, I managed to get these images. I don't know about you, but I definitely think this is 3D. You know what else is 3D? Your knowledge on tech, if you subscribe to this channel. I also engraved two tiles with a dragon and lizard's eye, and they both look crisp clean. Even on an 8x8cm 8 8 stone engraving Madara Uchiha, it still produced great results. Vector images were especially accurate on the bear on stainless steel and the bulls on aluminum. Even on canvas I got premium quality on this Groot image. The machine power is good, it cuts smoothly, but it underperformed when trying to cut really thick pieces of wood. Here is a plank of wood and here are the depths of cut. Some extra features I haven't mentioned are the three limit switches it has to prevent user error from damaging machine parts along the X, Y and Z axes. A fire detector which you can choose to have on or off. Personally I kept it off because it was too sensitive. A tilt detector in case something gets knocked over, a nice touch screen to control the basic machine features, an extra measuring tool in case you want to adjust the Z axis manually, and a super cool red cross light that helps with positioning and precision. Personally, I was using this to make sure my projects were level and not on an angle, but you can use it to get perfect framing by reading the instruction manual. After testing this machine for a few months, I noticed some cons and some definitive pros that set this machine apart from the competition. Starting with the first con, it's a little difficult to assemble. The instruction manuals are okay, but there are some nifty parts that you're gonna have to spend some time on during assembly. It's a little difficult to set up the auto Z axis adjustment and the automatic laser cross location adjustment. The machine is not always precise when you start using many layers and passes in wide areas. And the machine underperforms a bit with deep cuts. The pros are, it's hella fast. It has very good general accuracy. A very small laser spot size for clean cuts. It's very safe. And it's not too noisy as the fans turn off when on idle mode. The machine also looks great. For its cost, this machine is definitely a reasonable option and I found the best prices and I put them in the links in the description below. I highly suggest you get an enclosure box if you're using any laser engraver stronger than 5 watts. At least if you don't want your neighbors to think you're high all the time. This is how the room looks with only a window open for ventilation. And this is the same project but with an enclosure box. I use the Creality enclosure box, but you can choose anything that has a fan in it and it will get the job done. And that's it from my side, if you have any questions drop them in the comments below, I'll try to get to them and have a nice day.